I'm Lynn Gardner, a reference librarian at the Southington Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to sign up for and borrow materials from Hoopla Digital using your computer or laptop. Hoopla Digital is a streaming service accessible with your Southington Library card, giving you access to movies, TV shows, music, audiobooks, ebooks, and comics on your computer, or laptop, or mobile device. Hoopla is great because there are no whole lists. All materials on Hoopla are always available to you. There are no fines. Everything you borrow expires on its due date and is automatically returned. If there's an item that you would like to borrow again because you did not finish it or you just loved it to death and need it in your life all the time, then you can just download it again. Hoopla doesn't care. Uh, there are two ways to access Hoopla. Content can be streamed through the website or through the Hoopla app. If you're using the app, you also have the option of downloading the material so that when you do not have internet connection, you can still enjoy the media. Since this video focuses on the computer laptop access, I'll be talking primarily about the website. So you're going to begin by going to our website, southerntonlibrary.org. Conveniently, we are already there. So if you just scroll down a little ways, you'll see under Public Services, this is Hoopla Digital. And you can just click on that and it'll take you to the Hoopla site. Or, if you prefer, you can go up to the top where it says Services and select Digital Resources, ebooks, magazines, movies, music, and more. And this will take you out to a page listing all of our other streaming services like Libby by Overdrive, RB Digital, and One Click Digital. So we're interested in Hoopla right now. So we'll just click on Hoopla, the Hoopla Start page. Uh, because we are going to start from the scratch, uh, we don't have an email address or a password with Hoopla yet, so we are going to click on Get Started Today. So you'll now be on the Your Info box, where you'll enter your email address, confirm your email address, enter a password of 80 to 40 characters, and confirm your password. Now you want to make sure that you're using an email address you can check, and you want to make sure that you are using a password you will remember, but for security purposes, it's very important to not repeat passwords. So don't use your password that you would have associated with, say, your email account or your bank or Facebook or anything like that. To choose your library, Hoopla tries to pinpoint your location based on the location of your device and will suggest libraries near you. If you scroll down the list, you'll see other libraries are listed. Uh, Southington is not one of those, so we're just going to go to the box and we're going to type in 06489, which is Southington's zip code, and see, there you go, Southington Library and Museum pops up at the top, so we'll just click that, and then you'll just scroll down to the bottom and click next. Okay. So this is where you type in your library card number. If you don't have a library card, but you have an e-resource card, it functions exactly the same way, and that's what you'll type in here. Once you've provided your library card number and everything checks out, Hoopla will take you to your My Hoopla page. So it starts with a little slideshow of items which are either new to Hoopla or Hoopla wishes to promote to you. If you see an item or a collection that you're interested in, you can certainly go ahead and click on the graphic and it'll take you to the page with those items. If you scroll down, it will show you items you've currently borrowed. With your Southington Library card, you get eight Hoopla checkouts per month. Currently, this account says you have five more titles because I've gone ahead and checked some items out for you. So we have an audiobook, and you can tell because there's a little headphone icon, and then there's a movie, you see, because there's a little camera there. Now, when you browse or check out items, um, Hoopla will build a profile for you and recommend to you items it thinks will like. And then if there are items that you would like to read later but don't have time for now, you can favorite them and they'll appear here under favorites. So let's go up to the top and have a little look. Okay, so My Hoopla is again this page and it just get, lets you go to the different sections. Uh, you currently borrowed your favorites, your history, your history will be with items that you've already borrowed and returned. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. 
So you can browse by different formats, audiobooks, movies, music, comics, ebooks, and television. Or you can type uh, keywords in here, uh, author name, title, and you can either search everything or again, audiobooks, movies, music, comics, ebooks, television, but as well as author or people. So if you know an artist's name or a director's name or an author's name, you can certainly search for them that way. Or if there are particular categories you're interested in, say historical romance or true crime, you can go into categories, look for things there. Uh, publishers, if you have a favorite publisher like Tor, you can search for them here, or series, if there's a murder mystery series that you enjoy, you can put in the series name and anything that is on Hoopla Digital for that series will appear on the screen. So let's, let's do a little search. Uh, I'm going to do an everything search, and I'm going to search for sparkling cyanide by Agatha Christie. So it shows you the categories here of all the things that kind of fit those things. So we're just going to ignore that and just click enter to search. All right. So these are your results. So we have a music album and you can see that because of the music notes and the word music's underneath the thumbnail, an audiobook, an ebook, another audiobook, uh, another audiobook, and a movie. All right. So you can check out any of these items. Let's try for the movie. So let's go to Sparkling Side. You just click on it. It takes you there. All right. So here's the page. It tells you it's from 2003. It's not rated. It is closed caption. It's from Acorn. It's English language. And it's one hour and 35 minutes long. So, you know, that's, that's enough time in the afternoon. Watch a little movie. Have a cocktail. Enjoy yourself. So let's see, we have a cast, directors, writers. All of these names are in blue, which means you can search for related works that feature them. There's a little blurb here that tells you about what it is. And then this is a tag that tells you about it. So here it only has one tag. It tells you it's a mystery. If you clicked on it, it would take you to other mystery items. If you scroll down a little bit here, it says rate this title and you can see the 407 people have rated it giving it a total of three and a half stars if you don't want to watch this now you don't want to borrow it you can click the little heart it turns pink it means you favorite it and if you go up to the top and go to my hoopla and favorites it will show you under favorites that sparkling cyanide is there but we're going to keep scrolling right now so you go to a little bit down, you see related titles. These are things that it thinks are relevant to you based on your interest in sparkling cyanide. So we have another Acorn TV um, murder mystery series and then another Acorn TV murder mystery series. So clearly people who like Agatha Christie's sparkling cyanide will like other murder mystery series. And if you like, you can click on those and go to the records and borrow them. So all you do to borrow an item is very easy as you click where it says borrow. And Hoopla is going to bring up a little box telling you that this item is available for three days after you borrow it. And this title is available for streaming and downloading using your mobile device. Now, again, you can only stream it with your laptop, but if you are using your phone or your tablet, then you can save it for later and watch it without having to worry about your internet connection. And then it asks if you're sure you want to borrow this title and you can either click on the blue borrow title or the gray cancel if you've changed your mind. Now you're going to say, well, why is this only available for three days? Movies are only available for three days. Books are available for 21 and music albums are available for seven. So if you click here, we're just going to say borrow title. All right. Now, if you scroll down again, See, it's changed from borrow to play. So you can click play. And there it is. And it's as easy as that. Now say you were not actually interested in the movie. You would like to read the book first because the book is probably better. Well, I'm going to cheat and copy and paste the title in using control C and control V, but you could also just type it in and hit enter. All right. So here we have the audiobook and another audiobook. So if you look, you'll see that this is actually a 
English Readers Abridged Edition. So it is helping with people who are learning the English language. So it's a bridged story and it may contain some additional content beyond the other story. So let's just go back and you can click your browser's back button. It's fine, it won't forget anything. And we can go to this sparkling cyanide, which is unabridged and read by Hugh Fraser. So it sounds like it'll be delicious. So you could just click borrow. And again, it'll just start playing for you um, once you've borrowed it and clicked play. But let's go back. So here's your ebook. Okay, so just click. Uh, I don't need to see that. All right, so you have Sparkling Cyanide. It's a 2009 edition. It's 288 pages. It's an English language. And it's part four of a series. I did not know that. See? Librarians learning things every day. So there's your blurb. See more. And again, see now there's lots of tags for this to tell you. So it's a traditional mystery, it's crime, it's historical, kind of any of those things that go to related works. And down here, it gives you similar artists. So if you like Agatha Christie, for example, you might like Daphne du Maurier or Ellery Queen or Ellis Peters, Mary Roberts Reinhardt. You could just like click and see, it takes you to works of Ellis Peters and you can borrow any of those items as well, as long as you don't attempt to exceed your eight borrows per month. So again, it's the same thing. You just click borrow. Again, it's 21 days for a book. So we're gonna click borrow title. And then we go here and we click read. All right, so up here, there you have some buttons. So this is going to allow you to adjust your font size. You can change your theme so that you can have different colored backgrounds. Uh, and if you look up here, there's a little preview at the top. So dark, so if you're reading in bed and you don't want to stress your eyes, you can go into dark mode. If you find white is too harsh, you could do sepia or gray. White is generally the default. You can adjust your line height so lines are spaced out more to make it easier for you. You can change your dustification from left to full. Uh, you can make your margins bigger or smaller. You can give it columns or no columns, whichever works for you. I'm going to leave it at the default right now. All right. And then there's this little magnifying glass, which will allow you to search. This is really handy for cookbooks or nonfiction, where perhaps you just want to see a section of a book. You can type in your keywords and it will bring it up and allow you to click on them to go to the item in the book. And then this gives you your chapters. So if you just want to skip, say to, oh, the second book, because you've already read the first book and remember it from years ago, but just say skip. And here we are, we're at book two, All Souls Day. Now to go forward, you can just click the little arrow over here and it takes you to the next page and then the next page and the next page and so on and so forth. Now let's say this page is particularly interesting to you. All right then. Perhaps there is something that you would like to come back to later or quote to your friends in a book club. Then you could click this little tag over here and it would create a bookmark. And then we go here. See, you have bookmarked page 46, uh, chapter one. All right. And if you've changed your mind, you did not want to bookmark that, you just hit the little red X, it goes away. So when you don't want to be reading this book anymore, you can just click close and it's still there. You've gone back to your My Hoopla page and it shows you the items you have checked out and see there's sparkling side eye the book and it shows you the little blue line that you've been reading it up to that point. And so you could just click on the arrow and start playing it or reading it again if you like, or you continue to search for items and check out three more items as the case may be. Now, let's see. We have not discussed settings, which might be useful. So this little gear here brings you to your settings. So these are the defaults it gives you. You don't really have any option about that. They just come this way, but you can change them from how they're set.
initially. So if you don't want to receive emails from Hoopla, you would toggle it to no, which means you won't get reminders saying that you have checkouts available at the end of the month, or that it's a new month and you have eight checkouts available, or that an item that you're interested in has relevant materials added to the collection and perhaps you'd like to check those out. There's a kids mode, which is automatically off, but you can turn on. Uh, it's particularly useful if you're sharing your device with family members, uh, the younger ones, and you do not want them necessarily to see some of the materials. You want them to see only their materials appropriate for their age group. Then you would click on kids mode, turn it on, and then it would only show them children's materials. Uh, it keeps track of your borrowing history for you. So if you want to see items that you've returned, or job yes returned that's the only option really uh, you can do leave it on show and then you'll be able to find it later if you don't want to know about your borrowing history i mean hoopla will know about it regardless but if you don't want to see it you can just click on hide all right and then if you go to the top again here this is your library. Uh, Southington Library will always be your library for as long as you live in Southington. If you move to say Portland, Portland Public Library will become your library and you will need to change this to Portland and update your library card number to a Portland number because Southington Library will no longer support you and your Hope Black account. If you want to get recommendations that are more tailored, then you can go here and you can select different things you might be interested in. Earlier I had toggled comedy. If you unclick it, then it goes white again. So let's do drama. And we've got drama there as well, science fiction and fantasy. You could do music, spoken word jazz, sure. Let's create a very strange profile for Hoopla. Yes, and then other things, and it will tailor when you go to the movie page, the music page, the comic page, it will tailor what you see as recommendations based on the interests you've expressed and your previous browsing history and checkout history. Hoopla wants to be helpful. All right, and you can see that I turned on kids mode because there's a check mark there. So I'm gonna go back onto the gear and change it to off. And I'm gonna change the emails back to yes. I'm still leaving the browsing history as it is. Now, if you want to log out of your account altogether, you can just log out by clicking this button here. But generally, if it's your own device, you just want to leave yourself logged in. It's just easier. So I think that's about it for Hoopla. If you have any questions, please let me know uh, by leaving a comment on this on our Facebook page or leaving an uh, email message for me at Southington Public Library at southington.org. And I will try to answer your questions. If there are other videos you would like to see, uh, please also send us an email or leave a comment on Facebook and we will try to get those videos for you.